All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So the wedding of the rails to finish the Transcontinental Railroad happened right here in Utah 150 years ago today. Having a railway connection that could quickly ship people and goods across the continent was a major turning point in our history. They knew how important this occasion was, so they used a golden spike to finish the rails. So to celebrate, I'm gonna make a golden spike of my own. I got me a little railroad spike here, and I'm gonna copy it, make it into solid gold. But of course I am kidding. We're gonna go full size with this. <laughs> so here's a better look at the iron spikes. They are used, but they are not antiques. Uh, these are modern spikes. They are significantly larger than the original spike would have been. Let me pick the one that looks the best. I'll leave this one right here. I'm gonna polish it up a little. Take all these little nicks and stuff out of it. Okay, so the spike is now suspended in the mold and I need to mix up this uh, gel here. It's a rubbery material once it sets up, like this. It's not particularly strong, but should work for casting with wax. So I just add some water to activate it. Give this a good stir. Okay, looks like it's set up. Let's see if we can get it out without destroying the mold. That's beeswax. Ah. Here's the beeswax after I've uh, cleaned it all up and added a vent for the gases to escape the mold. Now I've just got to encase this in something that'll hold its shape. I'm just going to use a mixture of plaster and fine silica sand. So now after letting it set up for several hours, I need to get the wax out and thoroughly dry the plaster. To start, I'm gonna pop it in my oven for a couple of hours at maybe about 250 degrees. I don't want it to get too hot. I don't want the wax to burn out just quite yet. All right, so let's see if I've even got enough gold to make the spike. I'm probably not gonna have enough to make it out of pure gold, but the original spike was 18 carat anyway. So I can bulk it up with a little bit of silver and copper. Okay, so I got 610 grams of 24 karat gold here. So to make my gold 18 karat, I need to add 101 grams of silver, close enough, and the same amount in copper. So there's the metal in the furnace. As you can see, I'm baking the mold at the same time as we're melting the metal. Hopefully the mold holds up. That was a lot of heating. Oh, it's heavy. Okay. I gotta work kind of fast. It ain't gonna be liquid for long. goes. Whoops. Oh no no no. <laughs> no. It's not good. Okay. Oh there goes uh, getting it done before. The gold pushed its way out of the form. Uh, doesn't really hurt the gold, just no spike. Uh. 
That was a little bit more violent than I expected. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna try again, of course, but the video is not going up today. Many months later. So what I think happened is the prolonged intense heating was just too much for the plaster to handle. You know, plaster of Paris sand mixture is usually pretty heat resistant, but 2000 degrees for an hour is just too much. So this time around, I'm gonna do two things. First, I'm gonna put the mold inside of another can along with some sand to help reinforce it. And I'm gonna use two furnaces. One to melt the gold that I have now recovered, and the other to burn out the wax and warm the form. This way the plaster is not exposed to over a thousand degrees for very long. I think we're just about ready. Let's lift that off. Expose the mold. Lift this off to expose the metal. Good. Some of bricks. Stir. Camera's recording, good. It did it. Hope that worked. Okay, it's cooled off, let's bust it open, Let's see how it turned out. Yes. <laughs> well, let's go finish cleaning it up. So, it turns out there was a small void up near the top of the spike. This shouldn't be too hard to fix. I'll just uh, remelt the top and then uh, fill in with some of the leftover gold. And so, here's the finished spike. <laughs> I decided to leave it a bit rough, mostly because to grind out all those imperfections would just remove way too much gold. Plus I like it this way. You know, it's kind of like a gold nugget. <laughs> I did mess up on the uh, stamping. You can probably hardly even tell from that vantage point. If I zoom in though, you can definitely see it. Yeah, but I guess it goes with the theme of it being rough. <laughs> So, uh, the first thing you notice when handling this is it's quite heavy. Uh, compared to the steel spike that I started with, like the steel spike when I pick it up is like, whoa, that's so light. <laughs> I've got a scale here we can hopefully get a measurement on the weight. So that's 589 grams of 18 karat gold. <laughs> Something like $26,000 worth. And the steel 
weighs 373, which is not as small of a fraction as you would think, uh, because the steel spike, as it turns out, wound up a little bit bigger. Uh, through the casting process, we lost a little bit of size. So, yeah, it's, it's fun to feel. It's got like this slick, almost like soapstone feel, but it's heavy. So anyway, let's take this over to Promontory and pound it into a tie. See how it holds up. Here we are. Oh, yeah, these rails are definitely smaller than the modern kind. Alright, well, oh, there's the Here we are. <laughs> Let's go get my uh, log and rail. Hopefully before it gets too dark. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit bigger. All right, here we go. About ready to drive it in. So the original spike they actually pre-drilled the hole to make it easier to drive in and also easier to take back out. I intentionally did not do that because I'm curious to see whether the gold can handle being pounded into the wood. So, here we go. Seems to be going all right. Not exactly the right hammer to be using for this. But it'll work. That's it. It's driven. See the top's pretty marred, but it went in. No problem. <laughs> oh, I did it. Rails are designed to slide a little bit, just like that. That'll make it lighter to carry. Okay, well, I'm back home. Let's see if we can remove the spike from the log here. It is, of course, well and truly pounded in there. Without the rail, it might be possible. Let's put the pry bar on here and see if we can get it to move. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say that's probably no. Pry bar's not gonna do it. At least not this little rinky thing. This 
button. Yep. looks kind of cool. You can actually see how the spike went into the wood. Ah, there it is. It came out. I had to destroy the log to do it. So here it is after being removed from the log. You see it's a little bit dirty. A little bit of that uh, tar rubbed off on it. There's some marks kind of up here where I think it uh, hit the metal, metal plate as it went in. Yeah, right there. I actually drove it in twice. You might have noticed the change in camera angle. And the second time it didn't fare as well. You might be able to see it's got a little bit of a bend here. And a crack has started to develop on the top. It also uh, rubbed on the metal going in a lot more. You can see there. The thing that's kind of interesting is the, uh, the pattern the creosote and the wood made as it was pounded in. <laughs> but yeah, overall it uh, handled pretty okay. Uh, pure gold wouldn't have handled nearly so well. Gold alloy is considerably stronger than pure gold. Well, I guess I'll melt this down and make something else. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.